In step three of the Arnold Rendering Guide, we're going to look at how we can improve the render further after changing the light samples by using the Arnold Renderer settings. So to access those, you click on the little clapboard icon with the cog, and that will open up the render settings and the Arnold Renderer sampling settings on the Arnold Renderer tab. Okay, and by default, they're set to, whoops, three, two, 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 two. Now, you might not have all of these different things in your scene. I know I don't have subsurface scattering in my scene. So I could turn this down to zero. I could also leave it at two. It won't make any difference. But um, if you're not sure if you have something in your scene, you can turn that to zero. Do a render before and after and see if there's any difference. If there is no difference, it means it's not in your scene. It's not having an effect. So I'm just going to turn those down to zero and focus on these ones. So what I've done is I've done a render with the default settings at, um, I'm back at 720 just for this to get some quick feedback. And I can see that that's taken 28 seconds, but there's so much noise in my scene because these default sample settings are pretty low. So for camera AA, um, 3 is a low setting, 4 is considered medium and 8 is considered high. So I would say the first thing you want to do is up your camera AA samples to 4 um, and start as, with that as a basis. So what we can do is now that we've changed a setting, if we want to, we can come in and do another render and we can see how much of an effect changing that samples has had to the render time and the image quality. Let's finish rendering now. And so if I compare between samples of three camera A and four, we can see that that has had a difference and it's helped to reduce um, some of the noise um, but what I want to do is actually figure out where this noise is coming from um, and I think it's going to be from my diffuse so um, that almost doubled the render time by changing that one sample so I'm going to change the diffuse from 2 to 3 and because I don't want to wait every time for my whole render to complete, I'm just going to click and drag over a section where I've got quite a lot of noise and hit the render region button and see what difference changing my diffuse has will make to my render. Okay. So... <clears throat> The idea is that I'm going to go through and I'm going to tweak my settings so you can see from 2 to 3 made a big difference in the quality um, and I'm going to up the diffuse some more because that's obviously where a lot of the noise is because by changing it it's had a big improvement um, and the idea is that we'll go through the settings um, and see what effect they're having versus how much render time they're adding. And there's gonna come a point where it's adding so much render time that it's not worth upping those samples. We want to get as clean an image as we can without having crazy long render times because any noise that's left over once we've improved it with the samples, we can use an Arnold denoiser to remove. So we can see going from 3 to 4 had quite a big effect on the image and it has added 6 seconds of render time for this small region. So obviously over the image it's going to add, uh, rendering the full image it's going to add a lot more and then even more going over 1080. Okay. So I have um, 
worked on my scene before and I know that I get to a point where five diffuse samples gives me quite a good um, finish and oops, I've lost my render region and so I'm going to set my diffuse samples to five. I wouldn't advise for your CGI production projects setting any of the samples much over six. Um, for darker scenes you will need to go higher, like mine's very dark scene, that's why I'm having to go to sort of five, but if you start going above any more than that you're going to um, add so much render time. So you can see what we had before over here and what we have now. It's a much cleaner image. It's not perfect, but it's a much cleaner image. Um, and so now I'm going to have a look at the specular, which is still at two. Now in my scene, specular objects that I have are only really these small amounts of um, metal on my phone and here so in your scene you might have a lot more specular objects so you may need to work on the specular setting more than I do but I'm just going to improve this to three and do a quick test render so basically the idea is that you're going to go through each of the settings increasing it by one and comparing to your image and your render time to a previous version and seeing how much improvement there is. If there's a lot of improvement, then you obviously need to take the hit on the render time. If there's not, then you can revert back to the lower samples and use it at that instead. So the specular on mine we can see if you look here on the phone is doing something it's hard to tell at this resolution and on such a small part of the image but it's definitely having quite a big difference so for the sake of quality I'm going to put this at four and the transmission is the light coming through my lampshade so I'm just going to change that from two which is low to three and see if that has much of a difference so going from two to three transmission samples has quite a big effect on my lampshade you can see we're getting rid of noise so again because I've worked on this um, previously um, I've gone through and basically done the steps I've said and I ended up using four for transmission five for diffuse and five for camera AA and so I'm just going to do a render of that to show you the comparison okay so this was what we started with with the default settings and it was rendering in 28 seconds and by going through methodically increasing the samples I've ended up with an image that looks like this but it's taking 5 minutes 14 now bear in mind this is at 720 when I up the resolution to my 1080 HD which is what you need to render your projects out in it's going to probably double the render times so I have a much cleaner image um, but the cost is obviously the render times and if I look at my new image I still have noise still see noise because my image is so dark but what I'm gonna do is rather than push the render times any further for the example I'm going to use the Arnold denoiser to remove some of this noise your job when setting your render samples is to kind of weigh up the render times versus the quality um, 
at 1080 earlier, I did a test and it was taking 11 minutes 32. I could push that further um, if I had the time, but if you're approaching the deadline and that's the maximum you can spend per frame, then you're going to have to just leave it at that quality and hope that the Arnold denoiser can remove a lot of that noise. There's a really great online render time calculator that I would recommend that you use. And so I know that mine was taking 11 minutes, 32 seconds. I've got 100 frames. And so it's going to take 19 hours to render. So I've got plenty of time before my deadline. I could actually go in and potentially up the quality even more. I could up the diffuse again to six or maybe the anti-aliasing to six and see what effect that does. It's going to increase the render time, but I have time to do that. Whereas you might not, and you might have to limit your render time per frame to about 10 minutes or but 10 minutes to be honest isn't long <laughs> in the grand scheme of things 3d stuff takes long to render um pixar's frames can take you know 29 hours to render a single frame so there you go i wonder what samples they're using um so that concludes this uh part then steps two and three were pretty long um there is no set thing I can tell you to do to get a good render. You have to do it per your scene. But fortunately, the steps after this are going to go a bit quicker and they're a bit more prescriptive. And if you just follow what I say, I can tell you exactly what to do.